Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. And I'm Tracy McRae. The pituitary gland is a pea-sized gland located at the base of the brain. Despite its small size, the gland influences nearly every part of your body. It's often referred to as the body's master control gland. The hormones regulated by the pituitary gland perform important functions such as growth, blood pressure, reproduction, thyroid function, and even skin pigmentation. When the pituitary gland is working properly, we don't even notice it, but sometimes the pituitary overproduces or under underproduces its hormones, and diagnosis is very difficult because the symptoms can be so varied. Here to discuss what we need to know about the pituitary gland is Dr. William Young. Dr. Young is Division Chair of Endocrinology at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to the program, Dr. Young. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So what's the deal? Is it the smallest or is it the master gland? Can it be both? It's both, <laughs> yes. How, how does that work? So it, it's small. It's, it's a little bigger than a pea. If you look at your thumbnail, it's about a little smaller than your thumbnail. Um, and it sits right at the base of the brain. It hangs down from the brain, kind of like a, a cherry on a stem. And this gland has four major jobs in adults. It uh, tells the thyroid to make thyroid hormone every day. Uh, it tells the adrenal glands to make cortisone every day. And it tells the gonads, so testicles in men and ovaries in women, tells the gonads what to do. And so it's re re responsible for fertility. And its last job in adults is to tell the kidneys how to save water. And this is actually a really important function. Um, if we're missing that hormone from the back part of the pituitary, it's called antidiuretic hormone, you'd have to drink about 12 gallons of water a day just to stay hydrated. So this, we have a, it's like a thermostat up there that is constantly monitoring how either overhydrated we are or underhydrated we are. So if you go and drink um, uh, like a 16 ounce Mountain Dew, um, and you put that volume in your body, you're not gonna retain it. Uh, so it turns that hormone off, it allows the kidneys to get rid of the water. So Dr. Young, you mentioned the, the analogy of a thermostat, and we know how important a thermostat is, but sometimes it doesn't work. It can either go into overdrive or not produce as much. So wh why does that happen? So two main reasons why that happens. When you mentioned overdrive, that happens if you actually develop a tumor of the pituitary gland. These tumors come from one of the cell types of the pituitary, and the cell types are the types that I just mentioned. So there's a cell type that tells the adrenal glands to make cortisone. And if you get a, a tumor of that cell type in the pituitary, it's going to tell the adrenal glands to make too much cortisone. And that's called Cushing syndrome, and that presents mm -hmm. with increasing body weight, um, loss of muscle strength, high blood pressure, diabetes, purple red stretch marks on the abdomen. So that's an example of uh, where one of the cells in the pituitary turns into a tumor. And that can happen to all the cells in the pituitary. And it can cause that overdrive of any of those hormones we've been talking about. Is that a malignant type of a tumor? 99% uh, of the time, these are benign okay. tumors. Uh, in the history of Mayo Clinic, we've had about 15 patients who've had a malignant pituitary tumor. Mm. So it's really quite rare to be malignant. And you had said uh, the four different things that it does in adults... What are there additional things that it does in a child to, in children? The one additional thing it does in in the child is it's responsible for growth. Oh. So the pituitary makes growth sure. hormone. Um, once uh, you reach full adult, adult height, um, it's debatable whether you actually need growth hormone anymore as an adult. So just so I understand, when you have patients that are either dwarfism or you have gigantism. Uh, is that a pituitary problem, causing them to uh, have too much growth hormone? It absolutely is a pituitary problem. Um, so th there, there are different reasons for dwarfism, but uh, the one that's called pituitary dwarfism is when the pituitary gland is not making enough growth hormone. Um, and that's usually due to some damage to the pituitary from a tumor or some other process. Sometimes it can just be congenital where the pituitary, the cells that make growth hormone are just not there. So that's ra uh, sort of a rather extreme variation that I gave you. How would patients know if they had, for example, a pituitary tumor? Well, that's a tough one. Um, so the, the signs of a pituitary tumor can be from overproduction, like we mentioned, Cushing syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be overproduction of some of the other hormones. Uh, another hormone, and this, this is, I, I mentioned the four major jobs mm -hmm. plus growth in kids. There actually is a a sixth role, and that's in women who are pregnant. Um, so the pituitary makes a hormone called prolactin, and this tells the breast during pregnancy to get ready 
uh, to breastfeed. And then the elevated prolactin after delivery allows a woman to breastfeed. So that's another role. Mm -hmm. But that can also be, in fact, that's the most common type of hormone producing pituitary tumor where the pituitary tumor makes too much prolactin. So in a woman, in a woman that can cause um, uh, bre uh, leaking of milk from the breast, for example, and lack of menstrual periods. It can basically recreate the, the postpartum state. Um, so there, the, in terms of what would a patient look for, it's, mm -hmm. it's so, so diffuse. You know, it depends on well, what hormone we're talking about. That's the next question I was going to ask then. How do you know if that you've got a pituitary problem and not something wrong with your thyroid or something wrong with your adrenal glands? How would you know, oh, it's the pituitary that's the problem? Right. So that's something that an endocrinologist like me would sort out for the patient. Is that blood levels or how do you measure that? Right. So let's say, let's say the adrenals are fi have failed. And then the question is, why did the adrenals fail? Were they not getting the signal from the pituitary? Or did something happen at the adrenal glands? And we figure that out by measuring blood levels. So we measure the pituitary hormone, and we measure the adrenal hormone, cortisol. If the adrenal hormone is low, because you know, it's failed, and, but the pituitary hormone is very high, that tells us it's the, the adrenal gland fault. Whereas if the pituitary hormone's low, cortisone's low, that tells us there's a problem at the level of the pituitary. Dr. Young's very intelligent because oh I never God. understood that in medical school. I always <laughs> get those questions wrong. <laughs> but uh, in terms of treatment, where are we in 2016 in terms of treating these, uh, these tumors? So uh, treatment has advanced uh, rapidly when you kind of think back. There was a, a neurosurgeon in Montreal in the 1960s that developed a new approach to the pituitary. Before that, it was an incision uh, called a craniotomy where you'd actually go through the top of the head and take some of the bone out and, and go down to the pituitary. In terms of where the pituitary actually sits in the head, I mentioned it hangs down from the brain. What's well, straight behind the bridge of the nose and just in front of the ears, so right in the center. Yeah, right in the center. Right in the center. So um, uh, this uh, Dr. Hardy developed um, this new approach to the pituitary by going through the nose. Hmm. Initially, actually, he developed by going under the uh, upper lip and tunneling back behind the nose. And that, that procedure from the 1960s has been... Um, advanced over time. Initially it was done with an operating microscope and now it's done with an endoscope. You actually just go through one nostril. The patient's in the hospital just one night. Wow. Uh, it's, it's a pretty uh, uh, slick approach to the pituitary gland. Is, is the pituitary gland the smallest gland or is the thyroid? Which, which one is the smallest? Pituitary is the smallest. All right. Yeah. I see. I didn't go to medical school, <laughs> so I didn't get a chance to find that's, that's that out. That's why you're wise. You know, many years. <laughs> and uh, are you seeing more of these uh, these problems with the pituitary uh, gland? Are you seeing more patients present with this? I don't think the prevalence of pituitary disease has really changed. To be honest, there are there are some endocrine tumors where we're seeing more of them, and it relates more to technology. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the annual incidence of thyroid cancer. Yeah. has increased dramatically over the last decade. But that relates to the availability of ultrasound of the thyroid. To be able to find the thyroid cancer. To be cancer. able to find the thyroid cancer. And for the pituitary, you know, we've had MRIs for a long time now. Uh, we really, there's no new technology that's increased the detection rate of pituitary tumors. It's just that blood test is just always the way to it's, go. It's hormone testing in the blood and um, as mentioned, it's viewed as quite complicated by most physicians. Well, we're glad that we've got you on staff. <laughs> <laughs> we've been talking about the pituitary gland with Mayo Clinic Endocrinology Division Chair, Dr. William Young. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Young. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.